Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at an interesting new open source tool for game development. This one is going to be under an area that isn't really covered that often, and this is game design. This is a tool for mocking up narratives for your game, and potentially actually creating text adventures if you so wish to do so. This is called Arrow, and you can see it in front of you, and if it looks a little bit like Godot, that is because this is based on the Godot engine. We're seeing more and more tools, Material Maker, RPG in a Box, and now Arrow. There's a couple others out there that are based based on the Godot engine for creating other tools. And what this is, is an entirely visual based tool for designing narratives, program flow, and that kind of stuff. You first load it up, you will have a project. In this case, I've got my untitled adventure, and that project has a scene in it. That scene is where the adventure begins. And now what we basically start doing is program flow through the world. You can go ahead and you can create a couple of things in the world. Uh, like for example, I have this variable. Uh, that is pretty useless, so I'll get rid of it. We'll go ahead and create a new variable here right now. So we'll call this one um, uh, Boolean, and we'll go ahead and new, and we'll call it uh, B continue. Con I can't spell today. All right, there we go. So we'll use that one later on. Uh, we now have our B continue Boolean variable in the world. You can create a number of different variables. So uh, let's create another one here, for example. We'll call this one, it's a string, new, and we will call this, I don't know, say something, I'm giving up on. Okay, there we go. So we now have our two variables here in our world. We can also have a number of different characters that occupy our world. A character is pretty straightforward. It is basically just a variable. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create uh, Bob, like so, and I'm gonna create a new one of type Doug. All right, so we now have Bob and Doug in our world. You're going to find the user interface a little frustrating at times. There are certain things that don't work, like the delete key, and for some reason, enter never commit. So you always have to go ahead and click set or update or something else. Feedback to the developer, if you're watching this, please enter so that enter commits and that delete key uh, deletes. So it's right now, you've got a lot of things up here that are little short forms that definitely could use buttons or icons in their place. Another weird thing that's going on with the user interface is you can only resize from the top right corner of Windows. I'm not 100% certain why that is, but that is the case. So you can see this is the entry point for our adventure. And now what you do is you can right click or you can yeah, no, right click right here. And then you have all the various different things that go from. So we right now we have a node of type entry as you can see right there, it's got a unique ID. We'll call this one something that actually makes sense to me. So this is scene one. This is the starting point. All right, so there we go. So we now have scene one comes in. And what you do is basically start um, creating or populating your world. You got a number of different things. You got conditions, dialogues, entry, and so on. So what I'm gonna do is have a conversation with one of the characters I just created. So I'll go ahead and drop in a dialogue like so. And we'll call this talking to Doug. And this with the character, the character is Doug. And now Doug can have a number of lines. So it always starts off with, hey there. Uh, and these are things that you're saying to Doug. But what I can say is, I'm gonna say, piss off, Doug. And we'll add that one in. And then I'm gonna double left click, or is it right click, single right click, sorry, and get rid of it. Again, like I said, some of the UI choices are a little strange. Another thing is, after you've gone ahead and uh, here, another brick in the wall. When you go ahead and add something like this, you do have to come down and click the update or it doesn't make it out. It's very frustrating. You will find yourself doing that a lot of times. But there we go. We now have this dialogue. So we're gonna basically start our world and we're going to immediately talk to Doug. Now you'll notice in talking to Doug, we have a couple of different options that we can go with. We can say piss off Doug, or we can say another brick in the wall. In the case of piss off Doug, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fork that off into something else. So what we're gonna do is say, I don't know, um, uh, uh, we'll feed it to a user input, which makes absolutely no sense, but sure. So we'll say, piss off, Doug. It's gonna go over here, uh, prompt user input. So we got a node coming in like so. Uh, ask the player, what do you think of Doug like so? And then it goes to a variable. We'll say that to say something and update. So right there, and now our response comes back as the say something variable after we've prompted that out. And then we'll go from there and we can go ahead and do uh, like interactions. We can have hubs so we can have multiple things forked together like so. So you can have different branches come together and into one spot. Um, 
Again, you can't delete things. You got to right click and then select delete. Or I could have conditions. So basically I could have a value come in like so, and then I could do it based off of like, in this particular case, I can select my variable. So there is my string variable, and I can throw it against a regular expression match. I can have it uh, to lowercase, to uppercase or whatever. Definitely useful if you're using this to create a text-based uh, adventures type setup. But I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that one as well. So we've got other things here. So we've done a dialogue. Entry is when you first come in. Uh, interaction, I wanna just do, um, I just want to do content and then there we go. So there, and this is what happens after. All right, so very exciting stuff going on here. Uh, again, we give this guy a node name as well. Uh, print some stuff. All right, and again, don't forget to click the update button. And here you can see how it goes. Basically, so we go through here, we start, we talk to Doug. If we say piss off Doug, we end up at the prompt for user input and then we come out over here. Now, I do wish the ability, and there may be in place, but I wish I could go ahead and put a variable value within the contents text. I don't think you can do so right now, but that would definitely be nice. Uh, so there we go. We'll feed on that through. What you can do is come up here to these very not obvious icons. This should be like a play icon, but this was play the uh, play from project entry, which is literally right here. And then we also got play from uh, scene entry, and then we got play from node. And then here we've got the console. And the console is basically this guy right here. This is where our output is going to show up. So let's move all this stuff over here and play from entry. So we just came in here and you'll see here, oh, we're talking to Doug. What are we going to tell Doug? I'm going to say, piss off, Doug. And it says, what do you think of Doug? And I think, I think Doug is a wanker. And enter. And then we end up at, uh, this is what happens after. Oh, I guess I didn't actually finish typing that. Uh, you click enter. All right, there we go. We'll update that one. And there's how we ended up at the end and the end of our story. So that is sort of how you start stringing things together. Obviously you can take, uh, you could prompt for user input and then you could do a conditional on it like so. Uh, so let's go out of here. Uh, and then let's I keep trying to hit the delete key. So not to belabor that point, but I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna do a conditional. Uh, so we're gonna check, say something, uh, and then we'll do a regex uh, contain substring, uck. All right, update. So if it contains up, we're gonna go here, and we will do uh, content, and then we will say shoo over here, and then over here we'll say, dude, watch your mouth moth yeah i'll go with that watch your moth and then we'll go ahead and update so you can see how logic can actually be strung into play so go ahead and play this all out and there we go we we're at right here doug what's up doug piss off doug what do you think i think uh truck enter and then i'll say dude watch your moth so there's how you can see how you can have logic go and branch now let's say i didn't uh or, or we were at a logic point in our world so instead of say uh i don't write the word uck I'm gonna go up here and instead say jump. And now what I can do is something here for a reason. I could trigger this guy into here and jump has the ability. So we could say jump, say move to scene two. All right, and we'll call this one moving to scene two. And then we give the unique ID, which is scene two, like so. Now that's not gonna to work too well yet because we don't have a scene two. So I'm gonna go back here to scenes we're going to create a new scene. We are going to say, so, oh wait, no. Ah, fine, I'll just leave it there. I don't know if I can rename it or not. Yeah, no, I can't. I think I just go second scene. Again, the uh, workflow can be, uh, oops. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, uh, hopefully I didn't break anything there. Uh, so second scene two, <laughs> that'll be, all right, there we go. No, all right, so I definitely found a bug there. Uh, it updates the wrong thing. So we're gonna go to scene 49. Uh, sure. All right. So what we're going to do over here is we will go, uh, actually if I open up scene 49, like so it's not actually the scene that we're going to, it's the entities in it. So we'll go over to scene 49. Again, I do wish that if you double click something here, it opened it, but it doesn't. Yeah. Go down here and press the button. So here we are. And this is the node we are going to be jumping to. So this is the one that's important that it's called scene two. And just to prove that something actually happened here. We'll drop an interaction in here. I click, boom, here we go. 
and sure, go ahead. So what we're going to see is we're going to go from our one scene, this guy right here, which is ironically called second scene two, and then here, if we say anything that isn't a swear word, it will bump us over to scene two. So you get a very contrived example going on here, but nonetheless an example. So go ahead and run that one. So here we go. Piss off, Doug, what do you think? Uh, pleasant thoughts, no uck in there. This will then cause us to move to scene two, uh, and it failed. Why did you fail? Move to scene two, destiny. Okay, I think I did a... Okay. Open. Enter. Okay. Mm, I didn't update. Okay, by the way, if you are the person responsible for this program, we really need to switch that so enter updates because I do that all the time and it's a very frustrating workflow thing. Let's go back to the other scene, open that one up here. We're going to jump to scene two. There it is, now it's showing up. So I find myself not hitting update all the time and it, it does get a little frustrating. So go ahead and run that, piss off Doug, what do you think? I think ASDF, enter. And then what we did, we moved on to scene two and then scene two prompted out a go ahead and then end of story. So you see how you can use this basically to draw out uh, conversations, uh, workflows and so on. Now another neat thing you can do with this guy, as we come over here to project, uh, is project I want? Yes, project, more, and you can actually save a copy out. So this can be used, um, in JSON format to populate your game logic. Or what we can actually do is populate this out as HTML. And let me put that in my temp, temp folder. We give it a name, so I'll call it my game.html. And let's go ahead and save that. And here you see, opened up in the browser under my game. And you'll see I've got Doug talking to me. I'm gonna say, piss off, Doug. What do you think of Doug? I think truck. And then boom, watch your mouth, dude and done. So that is the game. You can go back in time if you so wish. It kind of gives you the idea of how things work, work together and so on. So you can create variables that are there for state. You can have branching narratives. You can have uh, conversation trees and so on. I think basically showed you the majority of the nodes. We got some nodes for uh, randomization. Uh, we've got uh, the jump we just saw in action. We've got macros. Macros are basically um, like if I go over here, we edit our macro like so, you're gonna see a macro is basically a fresh uh, graph. So you can do pretty much functions inside of macros, which is kind of cool. So that's what a macro um, is. Uh, interaction, jump, hub. Hub is a way of branching. Dialogue is a way of talking to people. Conditionals are a way of going in different directions. Um, yeah, that's pretty much most of it. Uh, oh, and you can update variables. So you can come in here and say uh, this value, this Boolean value that we never actually used for anything. So on some condition, let's say uh, after we came here, we could go through here, pass through this particular variable like so, and then have it set. Okay, yep, now it is true. And then we could feed that into, again, like a conditional or something. And this is where your various different logic's gonna go. So come in here, and if it's true or false, on false, it goes that way, on true, it goes that way. And that's how you start to build out your logic. And then once again, when you're done, go over to your project, go to more, and either export it as JSON or um, export it as HTML. Or again, you can obviously save a copy as well. Uh, this does use the um, Godot same folder kind of structure as where you launch it from. So all things to be aware of. And you can do snapshots, uh, go back in time for the project you were working on. So that is Arrow. As I mentioned earlier on, let's go back on over to my trusty browser here. Uh, it is an open source project. It is MIT licensed. It is up on on GitHub, uh, like I said, license, MIT. It's pretty straightforward, same license as Godot. Uh, you can do pretty much what you want. You just can't hold them responsible. You will notice the vast majority of code is actually GD script code. This is basically a TSCN. This is a, um, a Godot project. Uh, and then you can see here the scripts, the logic behind it are all GD script code. So if you wanna get in and learn a little bit more about it, uh, you can. Additionally, you head on down here, you're gonna find binaries for Linux and for Windows, nothing for Mac users. And then there is uh, the HTML JavaScript runtime. We saw that used in the browser, little choose your own text adventure we published out there as well. And there is a little bit of documentation on how things go. Again, uh, if you are the author and you happen to be watching this, please make enter commit. More than anything else in the world, please make enter commit. And at the same time, you've done a great job on the visual side of things. I love that I can 
uh, multi-select things like this. I just wish the delete key worked instead of right click and then picking CP, CT, and delete. And plus, I, I would honestly really highly suggest switching to icons because CP and CT and PE and PS and CL and PN, those are not intuitive at all. Oh, and then the final thing you got down here is you can search for stuff. So what did I use? Did I use Doug? Yeah. So we can go ahead and search for Doug and it will find the Dougs in the world. So there's two matches and we can switch between where we found those particular notes. So if you're looking for what a particular character did or not, you can use this little guy down below to find it. And that's it. That is Arrow. A pretty straightforward tool for doing... Um, uh, process flow dialogue tree narrative flow for your game. Uh, and you can export the stuff out as JSON so you can use this as part of your workflow or you can use it for prototyping or whatever else. It's, it's very early on. Uh, it'd be interesting where it goes, but I'm sure that the developer would love some feedback. And of course, I will link everything relevant in the linked article down below. That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.